Hey, have you ever found it difficult to read? Have you ever forgotten something when you need to apply it to a new problem that you are facing? And are you linearly reading your text? I do too. Don't do it. In this method, we are going to uncover the secrets of remembering things after you read and knowing how to apply it when you approach a new problem. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I did not just place the camera right on top of my bed. Bruh. Let's start the day with a mental exercise. What is the best way of learning something new? Understanding it or applying it? Is that exciting to you? Let's get changed. I am a fanatic of learning how to learn. By finding out what is the most efficient way to learn, this increases our intrinsic motivation. Because completing the task efficiently and fastly is an instant feedback loop for more motivation. So, let's get my face ready. So what has my relationship been with reading? It always has been a love-hate relationship. J-Hope said, if you are tired, take a rest, don't give up. And they show up for their values in all of their performances. I purple you, BTS. And lastly, I need to look presentable to my idols. Primer for my skin. Mmm, it's now shiny like a glowing magical ball where you can ask, what is my future like? Have you finished your homework? No, mom, I'm still training my insane stalking skills on K-pop. Hey, mom, I have grown a lot, but sniffing, stalking, falling around on the internet, and understanding the picture of how they debut, no, are some ex-K-popper skills that have remained in my memory. So I'm gonna put those skills into good use in reading, in learning science. There's something called inquiry-based learning, deep processing, and active learning. And inquiry-based learning means that we are actively involved in generating questions through applying knowledges and experiences to solve the problem. Active learning means that we are in charge of our curiosity, and depth of processing means that attaching deeper meaning to a piece of information rather than just physical properties. This chart demonstrates the characteristic of deep processing compared to intermediate and shallow processing. I have a really specific way to do this. Why do I call this reading method the stitch reading method? We want to stitch our information together. Stitch in this case means that we want to build a big picture for ourselves to fit different opinions and arguments into the new domain of knowledge that we are learning. In this paper that test schema acquisition and cognitive load performances shows that the more big picture cognitive schema you acquire, the less brain power you need to fit more new knowledges in the big picture schema. When you have a problem and you solve or serious interest in something, just bring your curiosity to the driver's seat. Our books can match our current situation of interest, problem, and situation. So remember a notice that I sent out a month ago? I decided to take a break and listen to my screenshot of the post right here. I was seriously panicking how I can deliver this message in a non-TMI way. Uh, I don't want to take my overthinking completely overboard. To put those sniffing and stalking skills of a celebrity into good use, today we have four books that we're gonna read. First, the book is called Neurolinguistic Programming. Second one, The Business of Belonging. Third one, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. Fourth one, The Brand Mapping Strategy. So I have the skills and theories to craft a good community post for my belief on YouTube. And I can also apply those tips and understand how BTS Works. My face completely looks like this. This makeup is not doable. Here they are, smooth and pretty and charming. So let me finish up my cake makeup and then I'll meet you guys at the desk with all those books. Put on some lip balm because I eat too much throughout the day. And Cue that self-indulgent posing with so many angles of my face. Contemplating inside my brain about the fact that why I don't remember anything I read. I know why. Hey, yeah, we're ready to start working, right? Need some pseudo sunshine from this little light panel here. 
So let's open LogSec and set up our digital environment. First, before we type anything in any notes, we're gonna type the slash button and then type the word upload asset. It's just a fancy way of saying upload your files. So we upload our files into LogSec and chef kisses for LogSec's ability to handle PDFs. We can sync highlights, add metadata references to the highlight and a lot, lot more. Be stored in your asset folder in your LogSec database. So your original file of the PDF will not be moved. So then I'll put the metadata of the book. Metadata is kind of like the profile of the book. It has the author, the type of content, the genre, tags, potentially finish date, start date, and a project that is attached to this. We can trigger this metadata by using the template function. To create a template is very easy. First, title a page called template, and then after you have typed all the bullet points on the parent block, right click and then click on make template. This will be stored inside your template list. When you type slash template, you can search through all of your templates that you have created. And yes, that's how it works. So in the metadata, you can see I have included all of the basic information about the book. After setting up the template, I will look through the author's a career, maybe some TED Talks, or maybe some podcast guests that the author has appeared on. This allows me to understand the author's point of view and his background and context of writing this book. Here I will see what is special about the author and think about how it might connect to the arguments that might be forming in his book that I'm going to read later. Throughout my research about the context and background of the book, I found out that neuro linguistic programming is actually pseudoscience. Me putting what I learned from last semester in the class of psychology of pseudoscience. Like in the past, if I did not use this method, when I read a book, I'll be like, what the heck does this information mean? Like this information doesn't have any context, it cannot stick in my brain. Information that are not compared or have any personal reference to me, the brain would just say, Bye! No need this, we're gonna delete this because the brain is very, very high efficient energy consuming organ. And then after we have built this most big picture organization mental shelves, we have a place for our information to sit in our brain so it has a reason to stay. The whole purpose of doing this whole thing is to build mental shelves in our brain. Each domain of knowledge has many reoccurring structures and if we build those structures first, the content of the domain will be very easily fit into our structures. Finally, starting the reading process. Yes, after all those prep work. So here now we are going to bring our attention and curiosity into the driver's seat. I will imagine that I am a lion and I'm finding food and I'll only hunt and stitch information food together to the version that I need. I want my diet to be clean and filtered. So it's a modified version of comparative reading in a book called How to Read. Comparative reading and my version of stitch reading is some of the most demanding and challenging forms of reading with a lot of cognitive effort required, but it yields a lot of of retention of knowledge. I don't know why the school does not teach us about this, how to read books or how to do our taxes or how to manage our time, but school does teach us that if Bob has 100 candies and he ate 99, what does he have now? You know the answer? I don't know this. I do not know this one. Diabetes. Mm. Yeah! So there are four filters and steps to read this book with stitch reading. First one is judge the book by its cover. I know our parents and teachers always tell us kids don't judge a person by their appearance or don't judge the book by its cover. But no, no, I'm gonna put this back here. Just reading the front and the back of the cover tells me a lot about this book. And I need to see if I want to invest my attention and curiosity in this because if I invest in it, there's no way that I'm gonna get those attention currency back. Second, if it passes the cover test and I want to read it, I'll go to the index of the book. Index is like the limbs and legs of the book. This is where how much the book covers each term. You can locate the page number of where the terms are mentioned. So here I'll write down all the terms that interest me the most in my logsec book notes section. Here there's a red pin in front of my keywords and page number because I use the reference function in LogSec. In the reference function, you can copy and paste the reference from the PDF into your notes. And then if you click on your reference, you can jump back to the highlight position in the PDF directly. 
and then third i'll look at the table of content and see how the book is structured think of the table of content like a skeleton of the book and then we pick out the limbs and then see where the limbs fits in the table of contents so here with the book cover index and table of content i have a really big structural understanding of how the author wants to present his arguments and then non-fiction books are written like blog posts. The author uses many real life examples to prove a point. They write the point that they're trying to prove as the subheading inside a chapter. And at every end of those chapters, they will also have a chapter summary for readers to refresh their memory. Those chapter summary acts as a really good tool for you to build our structural understanding and speed up the little details. And yeah, this guides us to our fourth step. Remember all the pages that we have picked and digged out from the index? Yes, look at the page number and literally just flip to 226. If there are multiple points in the book that interest me, I will read from the beginning because I just like the pleasure of reading and want to enjoy the process of reading. If we enjoy and everything feels like play, productivity and learning will take care of itself. To prevent myself to get lost in the details, I will make sure that I'm grasping the mental framework of this new domain of knowledge, which is how does businesses build community. And at the same time, I'll think like what are the main ideas of the book and how can those concepts be applied into BTS's situation? And repeat and rinse all those four steps for books you want to read, and we will slowly build the big picture. So it's time to offload this mental shelf into a form that we understand. Yeah, listening to angry dogs barking outside is my daily activity. So, time to build our mental shelves. The best way to build this is drum roll, please. Mind map. And after we have hunted a zebra and I want to pick out meat and put it onto a shelf that I can store because I well, the technical term is actually called knowledge structures. Let me read you the definition from this website called IGI Global. Total constructions representing a body of knowledge developed in relation to a domain. And how those concepts are applied are very important. Again, group information based on how it is applied. I have developed four to five big chunks of ideas. I can now start to draw the spine with those four to five big groups of ideas. I'll make weird shapes, relationships, and arrows to make this backbone structure more memorable so other concepts and arguments between each author can sit on top of here. I use a color from the brand mapping strategy and one color for the psychology of influence and then one for the business of belonging. And yay, I am done with processing my notes and learning. It's time for a downstairs walk. One hour later. When I walked downstairs, I also did like a little interleaving. Me resting here for my next study session, maybe. After drawing this mind map, I have come up with four core ideas that I found that made BTS successful. First one, emotional inclusion and emotional safety. As humans, we want to be included. That is the third level of Maslow's hierarchy. BTS certainly does this because they write and compose their own songs. Big Hit Entertainment Company was one of the first companies to allow K-pop singers to write their own songs. The topics that they include in their lyrics are topics that adolescents and young adults are facing. Those include mental health, high social expectation, financial insecurities. Every young person faces those problems. Putting those things in lyrics makes their song a lot more relatable. Second is social identity and unique community personality. This follows a principle of social proof. Because people share the same values, we will want to copy each other's actions. Their community reflects values, diversity, acceptance, justice, vulnerability, and staying humble. The third one is being cool. Being cool is about being accepted and your opinions are getting heard. The feeling of uniqueness and cool also came from not following the mainstream status quo. Western culture reflects solo artists and the individualistic vibes, but Korean values collectivism. Yeah, nobody's gonna understand my mind mapping except myself. I can summarize those points and maybe write content about this in the future. First, I will write what is the premise of the book? And then what does the author want me to know as true? What does the author want me to follow? Or is this book just a author's survivorship biased story? Meaning that the author picked out stories that are successful. Are there practical concepts and utilities of this 
book where I can solve my problem right away. Are there parts of the book that I am unconsciously filtering out because of confirmation bias? You always want to consider what the opposite side of the argument is saying before you form your opinion. And rarely I will highlight the author's words and put them in my notes directly, but unless the author's original version of how he has phrased the ideas is very captivating to me, I will highlight it with lock sex reference and then pop it into my notes. And when I click on it, it can bring me back to the context of the book. Like this. Ah, and guess what? I am done with studying and knowing how to build a community. So here is some of the big takeaways. Remember the mental shelves analogy and consider your cognitive biases such as survivorship and confirmation bias. And if you're interested in speedy reading and note-taking and understanding supercharged methods, check out this video on conceptual note-taking. I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are, wherever you are doing, all the best. I'll see you guys next time. Another funny video where it'll be on the floor, maybe. Bye-bye!